right? How do we compete in markets when something vastly more intelligent than us? If you think of the average AI right now as an intelligence, an IQ of about 120, I think is the new chat GPT in Sonnet three and a half. Um, it's going to go to 400, to 1,000, and then to a million. So we can't comprehend what any of this means. And so in the end, I think we've got about six years. I put 2030 as a rough date when we don't begin to understand how the f- anything works. And so therefore, I would like to be on the other side of that protected, which is you've got the house that you want, you've got the lifestyle that you want, and you don't have to be part of the economic machine. It's based around a thesis that I've developed called the exponential age, which is I think most people are familiar with now. It's a similar thesis that other people have had as well, which is that we've got this kind of group of technologies that are in full tilt acceleration mode when we get to full adoption of these technologies. So that's AI, robotics, renewable energy sources, uh, genetic sciences. It's a whole bunch of these technologies, including blockchain, that are all hyper accelerating at the same time. So, okay, fine. So the exponential age is really all about this is the fastest, largest pace of change of technology that humanity will ever go through. And it's probably an entire reworking of society itself and the economy. So what do I mean about the economy? This is this six, seven years business is really it's to do with how the economic machine works. Basically, GDP growth is driven by population growth, productivity growth, and debt growth. Popular uh, Debt growth has basically stopped except refinancing of old debts. Then we've got population growth. Every country in the developed world is seeing collapsing population growth. So therefore, they should see collapsing GDP growth. But you've got all this debts, and we've been adding to the debts to try and counterbalance this. This has been this big super trend we've seen. And then productivity growth, because of all the old people, has collapsed as well. So what we have is non-productive, slowing economies based around demographics. Then something has just happened, which was we've just introduced infinite human knowledge and infinite humans into the into the economy, which is AI plus robots. People don't yet understand what this means, but we are based on a services-based knowledge economy. Manufacturing was already being replaced by machines, but this is replacing everything. Now, there's two sides of that. One is the doom of, oh my God, what are humans going to do? I worry less about that. I more think, what the f- does it mean for the economy if we've got infinite growth of humans? So if generally, let's say population growth or immigration growth, whatever, is at 1%, 2%, 3%, right? And trend rate of GDP has been averaging of like 1.75 in the US. If you suddenly throw in a billion AIs and a billion robots, you've kind of added 25% of the population of the world. Now, it doesn't, it's not one for one match, but what it does is suddenly create outsized economic growth, but in ways we don't understand. The other part of it is productivity. Productivity, I think of as the amount of output per unit of energy. Electricity is the generalized energy. And what we're doing is lowering the cost of energy via renewables. People don't see it yet. They don't believe it yet. But what you see of every technological curve is they're all collapsing in cost and the output's going up. So electricity growth um, via renewables is, is just an exponential curve. And Elon's been talking about this. Others have been talking about this. It will, within the next 10 years or so, it'll be the largest source of energy on the planet. And then we've got nuclear and other stuff to come into it. When you change productivity, let's say you halve the cost of electricity, you double productivity. Now you've got AI and robots on top. So what we're going to end up in is la-la land in economic terms, economies we don't understand. And it's not in 20 years' time, you know, the old predictions we used to see. This is like, it's happening in front of our eyes, So then what happens when you've got these technologies doing this? Well, we don't really know. We're already seeing things like, what is a company when you've got AI agents? What does that mean? What what do financial markets mean? How does venture capital work? How does private equity work? How do IPO markets work when companies get disrupted? So what is money when there's no scarcity? This is a question most people don't think through. Uh, and we don't know the answer, but what is scarcity in that world? Yes, there's some things that are purposefully scarce. You know, One of the reasons I've collected a lot of NFTs is there is scarcity there. There is scarcity in experiences, human experiences. They become more expensive. Um, but all of the things that we think of as scarce, lawyers, accountants, research writers, all of this stuff goes to zero. I mean, zero. Um, so it... Money doesn't have much of a purpose 
when almost most of the things that we do for economic day-to-day activity don't have value at all. You know, it's really interesting. I just thought of that we, I don't think we've ever actually fully fleshed out or talked about, but the world you just laid out or the trends you just laid out in terms of productivity, AI, taxing the robots, taxing AI, which can actually be if productivity is growing, like we talk about AI and blockchain and Web3. What do you see as the potential impact that the two have on one another? Or in other words, where do you see the actual touch points between these two exponential technologies going forward? So everyone needs to drop their understanding of what blockchain is because they come with an anchor. They come with an anchor based on Bitcoin and blah, 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 blah. What it is, is a globalized, decentralized ledger that records truth. And so in a world where there's more machine-based activity, we need a way of recording what is truth, what are transactions, what are contracts, what are all of that, right? That's what blockchain will do. So basically, the internet of the future can't run without it. It just simply can't. Um, and th- that's what people don't get, that it's it's more than just money. It's basically how a digital world runs. We can't be more digital without this transition that we're seeing, which is why the adoption is so big over time and ongoing. And when it comes to you know the intersection of AI, well, AI is also an extension of the internet. You know, when uh, David Bowie's interview about the internet was still the greatest thing of all time, when he says it's an alien life form. And people didn't get it, but it is. And it's coming alive, right? The internet is coming alive via AI. So it has now a payment system, a system of record and truth, and it is living on this thing that we built, this web. So these things are are so inseparable or inseparable in what they are, because they are the internet. They are us in many ways as well, because it's AI is trained on all of humanity and our thoughts and everything. (coughs) So Economic activity has to be recorded on blockchain. Contracts have to be recorded on blockchain. That's most things. You know, most things are a contract in some way, shape, or form. So that all goes into the blockchain technology. At a simpler form, obviously, an AI can't get a bank account. It's hard enough to get a bloody bank account as it is, but you don't need one. You just have a wallet. And you're seeing this with this um, um, GOAT token and the truth uh, terminal truths is um, Brian Armstrong reached out and said, I'll give you your own wallet. So because he knows that this is where this is going, AIs will have their own wallets and it all works without us having to be involved. And as long as you've got a blockchain, you've got proof and truth. And so they're they're totally inseparable from each other. They are all the same thing, which is our digital future. 